He'll provide himself. Oh, Lord. I didn't know that God would provide himself a sacrifice, but he did. You see? So he got to the top, and uh, Isaac, I don't know whether he understood or whether he didn't. But anyway, there's no talk about a fight, a struggle, or anything. But he builds the altar, and then he lays the wood. Then he takes his son and binds him and lays him on the altar. Raises the knife ready to sacrifice this son to the Lord. And the Lord said, Abraham, he said, I'm here, Lord. Don't touch the boy. I never intended for you to touch the boy. But I wanted to know. I wanted to know. I wanted to know one thing from you. And God is asking you today this same question. That Christ that's in you, who does he belong to? He's the Son of God. Is he yours? I mean, you know, uh, is he there for your convenience? Is he there to help you to live a better life? Is he there to take away your cancer or whatever problems you've got? Wait, who belongs to that son that's in you? Lord, he's your son. He's your son. I don't have any right over him, but he is my Lord. In other words, he's the king in here. He's the king. And if you want your body to become that vessel that he will inhabit for himself and that that Christ will rise up to become the king of the kingdom, which is you, then God will do something for you. Because, you see, here's Abram, 100 years old, His wife is 90 years old. She's never had a child in her life before. But at 90 years of age, she produces this child. And now God says, I want you to offer him to me. And he never hesitated. Abram never hesitated. Oh, God, I wait a minute. I waited 100 years. You know, here's my wife. She's, She's 90 years old. Look, all of those years and I've cried out, oh God, give us a child, give us a child. And you never gave us a child. And now you wait until I'm a hundred and you give us a child and now you want me to offer him back to you. You see, but that was not what he was saying. God, you are God. Beloved Christians have to learn. God is God. And he's not some plaything for us. And God is not working on the principle that if you want something, I'll, I'll just give it to you. God has a program. And if what you want, if what you're desiring in your life is according to God's program, God will make sure it happens. But I want to tell you, too many people today have got their own program. And they're wanting God to comply. And he's not about to. You see, if we're going to see God bring this change about in our body, because that's what it's all about, then you we'll have to get into God's program. And just because you may be a preacher or just because you may be a Christian in some fellowship and you've got some position in that fellowship does not mean that you necessarily are fulfilling the will and purpose of God. God has a program for every person that's ever been born. But it may not be what you made up your mind you wanted to be. And I tell you, I, you know, I've had a strange sort of a life in some way. I was brought up in a Christian home, but I went through the church thing, giving my heart to Jesus when I was 10 years old, and all of those things. But you see, um, I became a missionary with my wife eventually, just after we were married, and... Um, then came back and went into pastoral ministry and I thought, well, this is it, you know. 
once you're a pastor, I think you you know you about ruined for everything else. Nothing else much you can do after that. So I thought that was going to be it. But you see, when I'm 40 years of age, I'm back in my workshop. And I'm saying, God, what are you doing? I don't understand. And he said, you don't have to. You'll be obedient to me. And I had learned at that point that was what I wanted to be. I said, Lord, whatever you want, it's fine with me. And after a period of about two years in which something had to die in me, which was my old program, that had to die. I want to tell you, I've had people... Uh, that have, you know, been in some very uh, uh, ordinary kind of church, you know, just going and doing what you're supposed to do and polish the seat and then you go home. And all of those things, and they've done it for years. And then suddenly they hear the truth. And they say, oh, brother, this is it, this is it. Now they're going to go out and they're going to preach and save the world now with the kingdom of God I said forget it I said you just zip your lip until you've gotten rid of whatever has been up in here because I want to tell you you cannot just change your mind those doctrines that we've learned that theology I mean it sticks in here I don't know what it's got in it but it sure sticks in there and it takes some shifting it really does. And it's not until that thing dies in you that you will be able to get into God's program. Ask me, because I know, I know, I know how long it took for me. But then I'm a slow learner. You may be able to do it quicker. But the truth is today that we must be involved in God's program. In other words, if you're not on the journey, none of this is going to happen to you. But in the process, you're going to learn how to build an altar and you're going to learn what true worship is. And true worship is not what you do in church. True worship is your own personal life and relationship with God. And if you have that, then in what you do in church will have some reality attached to it. But for many people, what they do in church, they would never do in their home. You see? Okay, so going back here now. So we've got him on the road now. Here's Abram, he's on the road. And he's had his first visitation from God. So in chapter um, 15, verse 1. It says, after these things, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. So here's a vision now from the Lord, saying, Fear not, Abram, I am thy shield and exceeding great reward. Well, he needed that. He really needed that, and so do you. I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. Oh, Lord. What does it mean? It means a shield is something that will keep you from being hurt by whatever there is out there. So he said, I'll be your shield, and that means nothing can touch you unless I allow it, which he's not going to do. So he said, I'll be your shield, and also I will be your exceeding great reward. 